Welcome to a presentation shortcut to manuscript. We're going to look at the lower and uppercase letters. This is Donald L. Potter and my websites are www.donpotter.net and www.blendphonics.org. So here's some writing instruments that you can use. I prefer of all, I prefer my trusty fountain Sheffer fountain pen right here. But for now we're going to put it up and I'm also going to put away the uh, ballpoint pen and we'll be using our two pencils right here. Now the first thing we want to look at is the grip and when you pick up your pencil I teach the kids to put the pencil facing them on the on the their desk and then they're going to take these two fingers uh, pinch your fingers that look like pinchers they're going to pinch and we're going to do we're going to use three words we're going to say tip flip and grip so I'll demonstrate we're going to say tip and that gets the pencil right there where we want it with two fingers then we're going to take the other finger here and other hand and we're going to say flip we're going to flip it up so now we got one finger on top one finger on the bottom and these three fingers here then are going to go underneath okay and if you look, you can see we have a tripod, we have a tripod, we have a thumb on one hand, we have the index finger here, and we have this finger right over here. Make sure that we're not on the wood. If we're on the wood, then when we write, we're not going to be able to see what we're writing. But if we get off of the wood, just a little bit above, not way down here, but right about there, then we're going to be able to see. And you should have this web uh, right in here and you can see how flexible that is and it takes pressure off of your arm so now that we got our pencil uh, proper here we're going to be looking at the lowercase letters and there's some basic rules that we want to look at all the letters are going to start on the, the uh, baseline all letters set on the baseline and letters are either uh, letters or parts of letters are of two sizes they're either tall or they're short Tall letters reach um, to the uh, second line above, but do not touch it. The short letters are short parts of letters, are half as high as the tall letters, and they reach to the first line above. So now we've talked. So uh, now let me explain that a little bit here. Make sure my paper's nice and clean. And we just use regular paper. I don't use any special line paper or anything like that but we're going to use multiple lines so we're going to go down one two three lines okay I mean uh, yeah every three lines we're going to put a dot just like that all the way down on our paper and this will help your kids know what they're doing then we're going to label these lines so the first line here is going to be the base line like home base this is the baseline and all the letters in the alphabet all 26 letters set on the baseline the line above of course is just the first line above the first line above the baseline and the next one is the second line above so it's first baseline first line above second line above and then the line below is just called the line below alright so that's going to help orient the students now <clears throat> We're going to use all letters are going to start with uh, either I'll, I'll show you we're going to draw a clock face here and you could put all the letters of the alphabet on here but we're basically going to be going to use two four eight and ten and we're going to start two o'clock we're going to go up and around the circle and we're going to come up to two o'clock on on our on our letters that start with two the other letters are going to start with a line it can be a short line it can be a tall line it can be a short line that goes below it can be a slanted line and then there is what we're going to call the cross okay so these uh, these are all of the strokes that you're going to use to write all 26 letters and I'll show you, for example, if we erase between the 2 and the 4, you'll notice that we have, there it is, a C. If we start at 2 and go around and draw a line down, we have an A. If we start with a line, 
and go up and around. Voila, we have a B. I'm just kind of demonstrating here. We'll see it. If we want a D, we start at 2 o'clock. We go all the way around, up, and there we go. We got a D. So all the letters can be formed either starting at 2 o'clock or starting with a line starting at the top. No lines go up. They all come down. And I'll tell you ahead of time that when we write words, we leave one space between one letter space between words and two letter spaces between sentences. And our letters are all going to be close to each other. So let's take off here. And I, in my in my book, and I will sh let me just show you the book. You can download it off the internet here. This is the shortcut to manuscript. I just put it on my iPad here. Uh, and then we have, um, here we have the letter formation. And I explain each letter. I'm going to demonstrate it here. And you can get the exact uh, script that you want to learn right there. And I'm going to be following it closely, but not e exactly. I want to do this really quick. And not have too long a uh, video for y'all. I want to get through it as quickly as I can here. So we're going to start out using our pencil here, and we're going to start with the letter A. And I like to teach the alphabet from A to Z rather than by commonality of strokes, which most people do. I prefer to go straight through the alphabet. So each day I'll teach three or four or five however many letters. Then the next day I have them write those letters. Then when I add more letters, I have them write those. I call that the alphabet string because my goal is for kindergartners, I want them to be able to write the letters at 20, 30, even 40 letters a minute from memory, not copying, not seeing the letters, but strictly from memory. And let me assure you, if they can do that, they're going to be good readers. By the way, phonemic awareness depends on letter knowledge. And um, a lot of times, uh, I'm not against teaching phonemic awareness, but I believe that the best way to establish phonemic awareness is make sure they know the letters really, really good. And then they can start assigning the sounds to them. But here we go. Uh, we're going to start here on the bass line. And we're going to start just below the baseline. Let me see if I got this right. Okay, we're going to start 2 o'clock. We're, we're going to do an A. 2 o'clock, we're going to go up and around the circle, up, and then we draw a line down to the baseline. So you can see that A is a short letter. It starts at 2 o'clock. 2 o'clock. And let me switch. Might be able to see this a little bit better. I'm using my number seven. This is a number seven um, uh, mechanical pencil, and I recommend seven or even nine when you're working with young children. Nine actually probably better for say kindergarten. Okay, B is a tall letter with a short part, and so since it's a and okay, remember this rule: the letter should start with at two o'clock. You have to go over far enough that they won't go over or touch the line or the letter in front of them. The letters that start with a line always start at the top, and you put them close, very close to the letter in front. And there are no exceptions to these rules. So the B, we're going we're gonna to start just below the second line above, and we are going to pull a line down to the baseline and stop. Then we're going to go up, and if you can visualize the circle here, we're going to go from 10 o'clock to 2 o'clock to 4 o'clock and back around to 8 o'clock, and that is the letter B. And notice a B starts with a line. If you look in a mirror, your lips actually form a line when you make the B sound, and that'll help distinguish the B and the D. The C is a short letter. We're going to start at 2 o'clock on the clock face. We're going to go up and around, back to 4 o'clock. So there we go, A, B, C. I'm a little close to my B there, but you can see that. D, again, we're going to start at 2 o'clock, and we got to get over far enough. I'm going to go a little further than I did with that one. We go up and around, and it's a short letter with a tall part. So we go all the way around, up, almost touch the second line above, and then we pull the line straight down to the line below. 
Did you catch that? D starts with at 2 o'clock. Do not allow a student to start the D with a line. If you do, I can almost guarantee you they will confuse the B and the D since the motor pattern you have taught them is the same. Please don't do that. It causes endless confusion. And if you teach them that the B starts with a line and the D starts with a circle at 2 o'clock, you can help mit, uh, eliminate that confusion or prevent that confusion. Also, if you have them look in the mirror and say the D sound, the sound of the D, 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 you'll notice the lines that your mouth forms something of a rough circle. And that will also help them distinguish those two letters. Okay, E... Um, starts with a line, even though it's not, even though it doesn't start at the top, it starts at nine o'clock, and but it starts with a line, so we put it close to the letter in front, and then we draw a line over to three o'clock on the clock face. We go up to two o'clock, ten, round to nine, and eight, and then up to four, and we stop. So that's the E, A, B, C, D, E, F. Um, starts at 2 o'clock, and I'm going to show you this. If, if you think of the F this way, start 2 o'clock, go all the way around and down, and then if you erase this part here, you can see that then you would draw a line through it. So let me, I'll demonstrate here, I give you the concept. We're going to start at, at 2 o'clock, but below the line, and we go up and almost touch the line, and we go around, and, and then now we're going to, and it's a tall letter, I should have said, E is a short letter, uh, F is a tall letter, we draw a line down to the baseline, and then we cross in a direction we write. Remember, we cross in a direction we write. You never want them to go backwards, because that can cause re uh, kids to read that direction, A, B, C, D, E, F. G is a short letter, so we're going to start at 2 o'clock on the clock, that's below the, below the first line above. And we go up and around the circle. Then we draw a line down below the baseline and go almost all the way to the line below. Now, what we do is we're, we're actually going to go down to um, 4 o'clock, go up to 8 o'clock, and that gives us a G. Notice the nice G that we have there. All nicely formed Gs. A, B, C, D, E, F, G. H is a tall letter, so we start... It's going to be close, going to hug the letter in front. We're going to start below the line, uh, second line above. We draw a line down to the baseline. Then what you're going to do is you're going to tr retrace. You're going to tr tr reach or trace up to 10 o'clock. You're going to go over to 2 o'clock, and you're going to pull a line down to the baseline. So we have a nice H there, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H. I is a short letter and it will begin at the first line above and you pull a line down to the baseline then you pick up the pencil and you put the dot on top the J similar to the I is a short letter those are uh, the H by the way was a tall letter with a short part then and the G is a short letter the I is a short letter the de the J is a short letter so you're gonna get close uh, it starts with a line so you're gonna start at the top you're gonna go down from the first line above to the baseline and then you're going to go around the circle from four o'clock to ten o'clock and we go up we put our put our dot K is a tall letter so we're going to draw we're going to start just below the second line above we draw a line down to the baseline uh, by the way it's a tall letter and then we're going to draw uh, two lines, one starting on the uh, second line above, and we go in and we go out. So that's a tall letter with a short part. The M is a short uh, H I J K L. M is a short letter. It starts on the first line above, and we draw a line to the baseline. Then we retrace, okay, and we go up to 10 o'clock, over to 2 o'clock. We draw a line to the baseline, and we trace up, and we go again from 10 o'clock to 2 o'clock and back down. The N is very similar. Again, it starts with a line. Short. It's a short 
letter. It begins with a line, so we're going to put it close to the letter in front. And we draw a line from the first line above to the, to the baseline. Then we retrace up from 10 to 2. And then we come back, draw a line back down to the baseline. Uh, the O starts at 2 o'clock. So we're below, just below the, the uh, first line above. And we go up and around the clock, up to 2 o'clock, and we stop. Makes a very nice, very nice O there. Some kids make very sloppy O's. This makes all of our letters. And the the theory behind this is that the idea is um, that um, let me let me let me read this. Many teachers fail to realize the importance of teaching correct formation of letters from the very start of teaching written language. Unless children write correctly, they do not see the symbol or the correct symbol for the sound, and the motor pan pattern, once formed, becomes difficult to correct. The best time to stop wrong habits is before they begin. Did you hear that? Listen carefully. If they do not write the letter correctly, they do not see it correctly. They do not see the correct symbol for the sound. This is why we have so much confusion. And Romaldus Spalding, whom I'm basing much of this on, uh, said that for many years since I learned the basic elements of this method, I've been able to prevent beginners who were clearly tending towards dyslexia from developing this great handicap. I have also, by this same method, rescued many older children from the frustrating failures to which their dyslexia condemn them. Those quotes are in my book, by the way. All right, back to our alphabet. Uh, the P is a short letter. So, um, and it starts with a line. So we're going to get close to the letter in front. We draw a line almost all the way down to the line below. We, we go from the uh, first line above, down to the baseline, and then down below. Then we retrace up to 10 o'clock and we go from 10 to 4 and over to 8. Q is uh, a letter, is a short letter. It starts with the, uh, at 2 o'clock. So we start below the first line above. And we go up and around the circle. We come down. And here I just do a little uh, line up in the direction we write. Some people will go down and draw a little, um, they go from uh, a little loop down there. But the R, this is a lot of kids get this, write this very poorly. Uh, it's a short letter, but it's, and it, it starts with a line. So it's going to start at the top. So we're going to make a short line to the, uh, from the line above to the baseline. Now, listen, we're going to go up, we're going to retrace to 10 o'clock and we're going to go all the way over to 2 o'clock. So notice what a nice R we're able to make there um, for the students. And I could have got a little bit closer to the Q there, all right? Should have, probably should have put it a little bit. Let's, let's, uh, let's fix that, okay? There we go. A little bit closer. The uh, S is an interesting letter. It's a short letter. It starts at 2 on the clock, goes to 10, slides across to 4, which is below 2, and then back to 8. So we'll demonstrate that. Really make a nice 8. A lot of students make very sloppy uh, S's. Excuse me. So we're going to start below the line. Since it starts at 2 o'clock, we've got to move over a little bit. So we go up and around the circle to 10, and we come back down. To four and then we go around so you can see how we made a really nice really nice s there the t is a, and that's a short letter the p q and r are all short letters should have mentioned that the uh, t is a tall letter so it begins just below the second line above and we draw and we get it starts with a line so we get close to the letter before we draw a line from the just below the line above all the way down to the line below and then we cross in the direction we write emphasize we do not we, and you don't want them going like that you just want to go that way one stroke stop you don't want them going backwards 
uh, U is a short letter. It starts with a line. Therefore, it starts at the top and sets close to the letter in front. So we're going to start close to the letter in front. We go down. And now we're going to round from 8 o'clock to 4 o'clock and go all the way up and to 2. And then we draw a line down to the baseline. The V is a short letter. It starts with a line. Uh, and therefore starts at the top and sets close to the letter in front. And so, um, let's see, yeah. And so we're going to go in, and, and then we draw a line in the direction. The uh, first line slants in the direction we write and finish without lifting the pencil. The W, and I'm going to put it here, on, go ahead and finish it, is just simply two Vs, all right? Now we're going to go down to the next baseline, okay? So we're going to go all the way down here. And our next letter is going to be the X. So we're going to, it, since it starts, it's a short letter. It starts with a line, which starts at the top. And therefore sets close to the letter in front of it and slants in the direction which we write. So we're going to go in the direction, whoops, got to get on the line there, in the direction we write. And then we will cross. Y, I'm going to show you how I do the Y. It's a short letter and it starts at the top and then it rounds and I'll show you here. It starts at the top. Again, it starts with the line so we're going to get really close. Uh, the X also lies, uh, all these letters T, U, V, and W, and X lie close to the letter in front. Now the, the Y, the way I like to do it, we get close, it's going to go uh, down and we go from 8 o'clock to 4 o'clock up 2 o'clock then we draw a line down almost to the bottom here and we go from from um, um, 4 o'clock over to 8 o'clock okay now another way to do th the, the reason we do this and I'll show you up here for example all these letters are designed to transfer easily into the cursive all right that's why this alphabet is single uh, each letter is uh, a, uh, one stroke, except the K there and the dots and the X, the T. But anyway, so here you have a Y. When you do the cursive Y, notice you're just going to add to it like that. So, so this transfers easily to the cursive Y. The other way to do a Y is also a short letter, and it's a line in the direction we write, and then a line in the other direction. And it should only be two strokes a lot of kids go like that and then add that but it should just be two strokes so you can choose whichever you want or your method is using i much prefer this one the z now this is really important it's a short letter and the y was a short letter this is a short letter it starts at the top with a straight line in the direction in which we write this is and then without taking the pencil off the paper we make a slant to the baseline at the point under the beginning of the top line and finish with a line drawn in the direction we write so let's we'll show you how to do it we start it since it starts with a line we're going to put it close to the y then we go in the direction we write then we do a slant in the other direction we end up underneath and then we go to the right Probably 80% of the kids that come to me for tutoring draw their Z's backwards, and that is, quite frankly, not their fault. If their teachers would have taught them with this method, they would have learned to start and write in a direction and draw your line in the direction you we write, and then it would come out right every time. Okay, that ends the lowercase letters, and I hope you're going to find that very useful we're going through the uppercase alphabet very very quickly and uh, they're all going to start uh, just below the uh, second line above so we'll just start out here and we'll just do them very quickly you have two strokes with the A the B it's is going to start close the C again D, a line down, pick up, and then we go around. E, we have one, two, three, four. F, like the E, one, two, three. 
uh, the G here. Let me see. The the G is going to start at uh, two o'clock and go all the way around and up, and then we just come back like this. That's the way I like to do it. Some people go like that. H two line two lines down one across the I is down and then two little lines the um, J here you have to move over a little bit goes down and up and then a very I like a small line on top the K L M and we have one, two, and then I just go up. O starts at two o'clock, and I like a really nice, nice O. Now we go down to the next baseline, and we draw a line down, and then trace. I, well, I like trace up. You can go down, and then Q. R the S make it nice like the one we did before a really nice looking S like that T P Q R S T the U similar to the other uh P Q R S T U V W is just double the V X one line the direction we write Y is the, I like to do it just like the other one again you can make a, a you can also do it let me show you here make sure I'm on this thing they can also do a Y with a three stroker like that but I really prefer this one and then the Z remember it's in the direction we write you tell them that they'll never make a mistake all right so there it is and let me tell you this is absolutely magic if you teach them to write all of the letters lowercase letters and every single day and in kindergarten, I would teach them in the first few weeks. And I would teach it in alphabetical order. I would not teach it in any other order. A lot of methods teach it by strokes. I'll put all the letters that begin with, with at 2 o'clock and then the ones that begin with a line and so on. And again, I, I understand why they do that. But when they get done and you ask the students to write the letter from A to Z, they still can't do it because they haven't been writing it in ABC order. So if you have them write it in ABC order, they're going to get to where they can do it with their eyes closed almost. Well, some of them with their eyes closed. I'd have them practice in the, mostly in the lowercase. You can also have them practice in the uppercase. And I'm going to throw this in for free. I've tested maybe 100 or more kids in the last five years from various public schools. And... I'm here to tell you not one single student at any age from first grade up through junior high or high school is able to write the alphabet like I've just written it. And many of them will write half the alphabet and then they go back and say, well, i got to start all over. The kids should be able to write a kindergartner by mid-year, at least by the end of the year. You give them a pen and a blank sheet of paper and ask them to write the alphabet and they should write something that looks just exactly like this and they should be able to do it really fast. And if they can, let me assure you, they will become good readers. They're going to have the foundation they need. Thank you for uh, sticking with me. This looks like 30 minutes longer than I had intended, but I'm thrilled to death to be, I'm thrilled to be able to present the, uh, my method for teaching the alphabet. Again, check it out on my website. Share this video with others. Thank you.